your first important task when you are laying out a quilt is your equipment and your fabric. And as you can see here, I have a, I have a tabletop ironing board. I have a cutting board. I have a six by 12 clear acrylic ruler. I have a left hand, right hand rotary cutter, scissors. So that's my basic equipment. But before we start cutting fabric, you want to choose it. And in this case, I am choosing a light colored pastel quilt because I don't get to work with pastels too often. I have two sons and a husband. And if I made anything pastel, but since this is a sampler quilt, which can be like a wall hanging or whatever, uh, I'm go I've chosen these. Now, these are going to be for the basic nine patch. The outside corners, and I have probably, there we go, the outside corners, these fabrics here are going to be for the inside nine patch and then we'll go ahead later and choose something for the corners and then the borders. But first off, we are going to cut strips of two and a half inches. Alright, so we'll be back when I've got my two and a half inch strips cut. Now, we're going to cut some two and a quarter or two and a half inch strips of the blocks that we want to make. These two will make one block and I picked them because this pink matches the pink in this little hat there. Um, you're going to want two strips each of at least 24 inches long depending on how many blocks you want. I want at least two blocks of each fabric of each set of fabric. So here I have two and a half inches of a purple floral and now I'm going to do two strips of two and a half inches of white with a uh, small purple floral print. Now, this ruler is designed so that you can measure as you cut. Okay? You want to make sure that the spine of your fabric, either the fold or the edge, is perfectly lined up with the edge of your ruler or you're going to get a cut that when you unfold your fabric, it's going to be crooked. As you can see, this is nice and straight. If I had been off the spine of the fabric, it would not have been straight. And trust me, you don't want to be sewing with crooked fabric. Okay? So I'm going to continue to go ahead and cut. There's another set. My fabric. And when I have all my strips cut, We'll be back. All right, I just want to uh, do this last cut with you, and I'm really got to be really careful with this here piece of fabric because this is what's known as feed sack fabric, and it's very, very old. Little history lesson here. Back in the days when people in the 1920s and 30s and earlier, when flour and feed and grains came in um, muslin bags. People, when they finish using their flour, they would take the muslin sack and waste not, want not, they would make it up into an apron or whatnot. So, <clears throat> especially in the 1930s, when the Depression hit, in order to get people to buy their brand of flour, and sugar, uh, companies started putting prints on their fabrics because they knew people were reusing the bags. There is a story of my mother having a, a sugar sack made into a dress, a print sack, and they even used, the, but the label used to be printed right on the fabric. So my grandmother made her a little pair of underwear with the um, sugar. Sugar was printed across her bottom. So she'd have a matching dress with a pair of panties and the panties would say sugar across the bottom. Anyway, these strips here that you see are going to be these squares. Now I'm going to pick a solid color for the corner pieces and I am, you guessed it, going to pick pink. The pink is going to be the corners on the, the blocks and that's going to be solid so I am going to have a print fabric 
in the borders in between but I am going to match the pink from the corners to the pinks and the squares and the binding. All right, but shortly I'm going to get sewing these strips together and show you how to make or how I make this block. All right, we'll be back when we got the sewing machine set up. I'm really sorry folks, I accidentally deleted the footage of me sewing the strips together to make the initial nine patch block. So I'm going to tell you what I did. I would take the strip of the block, the two colors that I wanted to make the block in, for instance, pink, green, pink. Then I would sew them together down the length with an eighth of an inch seam. Then I would cut across at two and a half inches so that I would have a two and a half inch strip, but it was pink, green, pink. Then I would sew three strips of green, pink, green, and again, cut at two and a half inches, and then I would sew them together so that they were alternating so that I would have a block. Now this is only a four patch block for as an example, but as you could see, this would be green, pink, green, and the one below it would be pink, green, pink and then I would alternate again for the bottom. You'll see these blocks in the rest of the video, but I am terribly sorry that I did not, um, that I accidentally rec de deleted it. Okay, we'll be back within a minute. Now we have our 12 squares, and I thought it was going to be nine for a wall hanging, but I'm making this in a crib quilt size, just for demonstration purposes. And now that we have our 12 squares, we're gonna iron them out, and once they're ironed out, we're going to do the corners for the blocks. You want your blocks always to be nice and ironed and tidy so that it makes your corners and your cuts and your lining up just right. All right, we'll be back when I have these all ironed out. All right, now we're going to make our corners for our blocks. As you can see, each one of these blocks has a corner. Now, these blocks finished are six inches square. So what we need to do is we need to have four corners that are going to work on each one. If you look at this piece of fabric, okay, we need the corners to go here. But we need four for each block. So we have 12 blocks, that means we need 48 corners. Now, if we take this and make, a f make four and a half inch squares, what I've done here is I have folded a fa piece of fabric three ways because the piece of fabric is longer than 12 inches. I folded it three ways and I'm folding it again and we're going to cut this so that we have four and a half inch wide strips. There's that, and then we're gonna go up here to one, two, three, four and a half inch. And we're gonna cut this along here. Now we have four and a half inch strips. And we're just gonna go along and cut from our four and a half inch strips, we're going to cut four and a half inch squares. Now obviously, this, okay, there's four, all right, we're gonna have to do this this way just to be made, just to make sure, just to make sure. All right, we're gonna go four, that's three, we want four and a half to there. And with any luck, this one should be just about four and a half. It's four and three quarters, so we get to take off a quarter inch. There is a grid on these rulers, so you can line things up this way and this way so that things will be square. Now, out of one of these squares, we're going to get two corners. 
because we're going to go corner to corner, point to point, and we're just going to cut this across. And what we have here, now you're going to have a little bit of hangover on each corner. All you have to do to remedy that is make sure your point of your square is in the center of your block. And we'll put a pin here. And we'll sew this on to demonstrate. Keep your line, keep your sewing seams exactly the same. So that little line on my plate here that says number 10, I'm using that measurement for the whole quilt. And it looks like my tension, looks like my tension needs adjusting on my machine because that pulled up a little bit. But for the moment, this will do the job. Alrighty, and when you get four of these on here, you have your another square. So I'll be back when I have four corners on here. There we go, folks. We have one square. <clears throat> now, here's our blocks, our finished blocks, and they've all been ironed. And now we're going to take these finished blocks and we're going to bind them or we're going to put borders on them. Now <clears throat> what I've chosen for this is a floral fabric or a fine floral fabric with pink rosebuds that my dear friend Helen gave to me when she said she was going to retire from quilting. Now I don't know how people retire from quilting. Um, she ain't blind and her fingers work, so I, I, I don't, I just don't believe her. I don't believe that she's retired. But what we're going to do now is we're going to start sewing. Now, I've cut these strips in the same width that these strips were cut in, two and a half inches, because by the time we get the quarter inch seam allowance down, it's going to be the same size as these blocks. You're going to want about five or six yards of these strips. And if you notice in this picture, each border has a center block. And for that, I have chosen the same fabric that I have made the corners out of. So that way, it'll all tie together nicely. You'll see what I'm talking about. Alrighty, now what we're going to do is we're going to take, we're going to start taking the right side of the block and the right side of our strip and we're just going to sew the block to the strip using the same measurement on the line of your sewing machine plate that you've been using all along. Now you could pin this on, I'm just being lazy because, well, that's just, as my son would say, that's just how I roll. Now just before you get to the end of that block, we just put another one on. You just leave enough room in between the blocks to cut. Now I recommend that you do pin your fabric, but if you're just, when I'm just using short pieces like this, I just hold it in place. All right, we'll be back when I've got this ready for cutting apart. Okay, now here we've got four blocks sewn to the strip of the border fabric. And what we're going to do is we're going to take our ruler and our rotary cutter and we're just going to cut them off. Now you want to make sure that this is in line with your block. You don't want to just cut it off. You want it to be so that you have your border level with your edge of your block. So we have, what we've done is we've taken our squares now and we've sewn our 
two and a half inch strip down one side and now we're just going to start sewing them together in lengths of three because we want our block or we want our quilt to be three blocks wide and four blocks long. Just like this. And once we have four of these, I'll be back and we'll put them together. All right. You saw my first strip of three blocks wide with the two and a half inch strips in between. Now the second strip we're going to have to start putting the top and bottom on. So we have one, one block with the strip with another block on it and what I've done is I've sewn a strip with two pink blocks on the end and we're just going to sew it together. This will make our second row that makes it easier to attach the first row. I don't know if that's making absolutely any sense whatsoever, but it will all come out in the wash when we see what I'm laying out. Got a thread there. Now we're going to take block number three and block number three is one of these and we're going to put a piece across the top like so and we're going to attach these two together again with a piece and two pink ends. Now remember folks, I've been doing this a while. I recommend you pin your pieces of fabric. Oh. I recommend that you pin your pieces of fabric together so that they stay in place. We'll put another pink block on the end. Now this is a fairly simple quilt. I could go even simpler, but I might do that. Um, the reason I'm doing this is because uh, someone I know is having a baby and so I, I'm getting this done first or I would have done a very very ba more basic quilt but we will I will for the very beginner of quilters I will make a basic sewn together tied quilt but in for the meantime we're going to do this one so that it is ready for the new baby that's coming into our lives and no hope I am not pregnant I am not pregnant. That would take seven kinds of a miracle. That is the truth. Okay. Now, we have our two blocks with our ends on them. We're going to attach our next block to it. And we will put an end on it. And then I will show you how we put the second strip attached, or the first strip attached to the second. Once these first two strips are done, it's just a matter of repeating the first strip and these blocks in between. Now here is strip number two. I just going to want to show it to you. Oh, we still have to do the one end piece. Which we'll do quicker than a jackrabbit on a date. I know some people think that's funny, but if you think about it, <clears throat> if you've ever seen rabbits mate, they're really quick. I mean, we're talking cyber speed. And it's over, have a cigarette. There we go. There's that. Now, if I was you, I would be pinning along any seams. I'll hold this in place. Now, what I'm going to do now is this time I am going to use pins just so that 
we have a nice see how that's going to lay out so that we have a nice seam and make sure everything lines up just so this is a very special baby folks i mean all babies are special but when i was um first pregnant with my oldest son i stayed for um most of my pregnancy with my brother and his wife and <clears throat> Bronwyn, who's actually going to be going to be 26 in a couple of days, and she turned two two weeks before my son Arthur was born. And while I stayed with them, Bronwyn and I spent a lot of time together. She's a very special little girl. All my nieces and nephews are very special. But uh, I tell you, it was uh, some cute. She got so used to me being there every day that when I went into the hospital to have my son, they brought Bronwyn to the hospital when it was time for me to come for them to pick me up to bring me home. And Bronwyn hadn't seen me for a week because I'd had a C-section and I was in the ho an emergency C-section and I was in the hospital for a week. So my brother and our neighbor came to pick me up, me and my son Arthur up, and our neighbor, uh, Colleen, and I, and the baby, and Bronwyn, waited in the lobby for my brother to go get the car. Bronwyn was very, very, very shy of me for some reason. You know, this was, she was like in a strange place, and Aunt Bev had a baby in her hands, and, you know, Bronwyn was the baby in the family. So, I mean, what was I doing carrying somebody else? You know what I mean? So, I, for a minute, I put, uh, my, I get, handed my son to my friend Colleen. And um, at the moment I put my son in Colleen's arms, Bronwyn said, Mon, Mon, Mir, Mir, meaning come here. She was only two. She just turned two. And so, uh, I walked over to her and she took my hand and she immediately started me leading me away from this baby. She really wanted me to have nothing to do with this baby. She was the princess. But, uh, God, she was adorable. I think, you know. Anyway, I'm sure uh, you'll get a chuckle out of that, but I'm sure she'll be embarrassed all to get out over that story. All right, we're all pinned. And now we're going to sew this last... Um, where do we go? We're going to sew this last strip on and then we're going to check it out and see if we can't. This is one of the reasons why I pinned this because now I'm working with a, lo a lot of fabric here and uh, I just want to make sure everything is going to be lined up as it should be. Alrighty. And here... As Jackie Gleason would say, away we go. Alrighty. Yeah, that's showing my age, isn't it, folks? Bet you there's a lot of people out there chuckling at me saying Jackie Gleason when most people don't even know who I'm talking about. Most people under 40. I'm not going to say, you know, someone the other day said, oh, you're not that old, you're what, pushing 40? I said, honey, I'm pulling it with a trailer hitch. I'm pushing 50. let's have a look alrighty let's have a look at this before we iron it oh that's lovely I think that's just going to be just lovely this fabric came from my Aunt Jane uh, she would be Bronwyn's great Aunt Jane and the baby's great great Aunt Jane anyway let's uh, iron this out and then we will find the backing and the batting and we will be back to pin this all together.